Today in NeoVim Config is about to take the next step. With inline error messages and auto completions from your favorite language servers, you don't even need VS Code anymore. Okay, first things first, we're going to need NVIM LSP config. So if you scroll down here and follow the quick start, as it says, you're supposed to install your language servers. So if you need to have like 10 language servers, you're going to have to run all these commands. Quite a lot, right? So we're going to use a different plugin called Mason. Okay, so if you make an LSP Lua file, we add Mason in here. We add a config function, and then we put require mason.setup in there. And then we write and quit, and then we reopen. And if we do call on Mason, call on Mason, we're going to get a list up here of all the language servers that we can possibly install. Now, I, I've already got some installed in the system, but basically all you need to do is just press the slash and type the language server you want. So go to it or any language server. Let's just go down to the bottom and you just click I. And as you can see, it's going to install it just like that. So now that we've got our language servers, let's set up Mason and LSP config. Now, this is a, another plugin that allows Mason and LSP config to communicate. In order to do this, we just need to add these two dependencies. Like so, the dependencies have been added. Now, there is also an extra step here. We need to do Mason LSP config setup as well. And inside here, you can add something called ensure installed. Now, this means that if you swap systems or anything like that and you want to carry your config over, you can ensure that you have language servers installed automatically when, before your files open. So if we do Lua LS in here, then anytime we launch NeoVim, it will ensure that the Lua LS server is installed. So you can add a couple in here, maybe you want to add ESLint, maybe you want to have a TypeScript server. So now that we've got Mason set up, we just need to enable the language server. So we can do so with Vim LSP enable Lua LS. And if we write and quit out of here, and now if we delete the last bracket, we get an error, as you can see in line there. Now, this is great, but we can't actually access most of the LSP's stuff without some key maps. So let's set them up now. So these key maps are the default key maps from LSP config. So basically what it does is when the LSP attaches, it's going to initialize all these key maps and, we, and only when the LSP attaches. So if there's no language server attached to the buffer you're in, these key maps won't work. So as you can see, we've got things like GD for go to definition. We've got leader space for hover, which is as if you hovered it over a mouse, like in VS Code. We've got GI, which means go to implementation, code actions, everything you need. And you can customize your key maps to whatever you like. Now when we relaunch and we go back to the LSP Lua, if we delete the last bracket, now we can do leader D and we can get the diagnostic for that. Brilliant. So we can go a step further. You can actually set diagnostic config. So for example, virtual text. Now what this will do, is if there is an error, it will put it directly next to it. We get rid of this. As you can see, it tells you there's a miss symbol there. So without having to do leader D for the diagnostic, you can get the diagnostic in line. And as you can see, look, undefined global Vim. We'll sort that one in a minute. If you don't like virtual text, there's also another one called virtual lines. And what virtual lines does is the exact same thing, but as you can see, it puts it on its own separate line underneath. This is useful if you've got like a long error message or something like that. And then the underline true is basically just the underline that you see under the word Vim there. So these are the options I'm going to go for. Virtual text and underline. And I'm going to put them in my options.lua. So now let's make this a bit more modular. We want to set up multiple language servers. We don't just want Lua LS. So let's set up some servers in here. So we'll do Lua LS. And then we can pass options in there for it. Now, I don't know if you've noticed the undefined global Vim. So we need to tell the language server that yes, we are aware of this diagnostics global Vim. And if we, we, do, we can do that by simply adding these settings. So in the Lua language server, we just add settings for Lua diagnostics globals Vim. Okay, perfect. So now we've got the options in place. Now we just need to use them. So in this config function, we're going to pass the options in here. And then we're simply going to loop through all, that, all our language servers and use the config that we assigned, just like this. Okay, what this function is actually doing is it's looping through these servers, it's taking the Lua LS as one key, and then it's taking its, its table that has assigned to it as the config. So this is the config, and this is the server in this function. So we're setting up the config with the server and the config, and then we're enabling the server. And then now, if we restart NeoVim, because the LSP file, we shouldn't get any complaints about the Vim global anymore. Perfect. And just to show you it is still working, we are getting the missed symbol error there. 
So now that Lou is all set up, let's set up some TypeScript ones. So we got TSLS, ESLint, and Tailwind, for example. And now, since, since we've already done all the hard work, we don't have to touch this code down here. All we have to do is add servers in here, and if we want to add any options, we can. If not, it'll use LSP Config's default options, and that's perfectly fine for us for TypeScript, ESLint, and Tailwind for now. Now, what you want to do is you want to do colon mason, and you want to make sure you've got ESLint installed, you've got Prettier installed, and you've got Tailwind installed, and TSLS. So all you have to do is just press the slash and search for them servers. So if I remove this semicolon, ESLint is immediately going to kick in. Now, what would pair with this perfectly is a way that we can see the suggestions that LSP is going to suggest us or available things from the language server. We can do that with something called Blink CMP, which is going to be completions in NeoVim. And paste this in here. It's going to be quite a long config. Now, it's not really that long. It's just got a lot of comments. You can read through these if you want. OK. Now on NeoVim 11, Blink CMP is going to automatically integrate with the LSP setup previously. So if we close out of this, we should be able to see some suggestions. So let's say if we want to look for a function. Now you might have seen that I, when I typed function then, I immediately press enter. That's because I'm used to pressing enter when I want to accept. So if you want to do that also, you can set a key map. We can expand the default preset by using it and then adding my own. So carriage return is enter, and I want that to accept. And I want control and space to trigger like a hover, like a, like a give me some suggestions type of thing. So now we should get suggestions. So if I do control and space, I'm, I can look through the suggestions. If I type the word function, I can press enter and accept the suggestion. So now we're getting a really complete config. One additional thing that I like is to see the documentation. So if I'm doing function, I want to see what that actually is. This is useful in React because you can see what libraries it's importing it from. And to do that, all you need to do is do auto show true in the completion documentation part. And if we leave and come back, now if we type function, we're going to get a definition. So if I just go through these, anything that's a snippet, it's going to be a preview snippet before I do it. Just like that. Okay, that's a big one out of the way, LSP config. In the next episode, we're going to be covering automatically formatting the file when we save it and diagnosing, so if you want to pull up a diagnostics and view all the errors across the code base. I'll see you in the next episode.